Hello, it's Sarah, the Tudor Travel Guide here, and I'm on a Tudor road trip to North Yorkshire. And in fact, I'm here at the glorious Markenfield Hall. Now, Markenfield Hall is truly a hidden gem. Many people have not visited it, but we are going to show you why this is one of the must visit places if you come to North Yorkshire. Markenfield Hall is an early 14th century moated manor house and one of my favourite architectural historians, Anthony Emery, calls it one of the finest examples of its type surviving in England today. And that alone makes it a must see, because not only is it a fine example of a medieval house, it has some fantastic Tudor history associated with it. The hall as we see it today was built by John de Markenfield in the early 14th century after he was given a licence to crenellate. John de Markenfield started off life at court as being a simple lowly clerk to Edward I, but he rose to become Chancellor of the Exchequer to Edward II. This meant he was a man who collected taxes and made him, well, less than popular with his neighbours. He was also quite a brutal man, being accused of rape at one point and even being excommunicated by the Pope. Nevertheless, he managed to build this glorious medieval house just three miles south of the city of Ripon close to the old medieval road that connected Ripley with the aforementioned city. So as you can see, Markenfield Hall has a moat spanned, crossed by a stone bridge and guarded by, in fact, a Tudor gatehouse. It's a single courtyard house, which once had three ranges, with the principal privy ranges, including a great hall, a solar and a privy chapel in the tower block, which you can still see in a fine state of preservation today. And in fact, that is one of the most glorious things about Markenfield. Whereas with some medieval houses later, subsequent generations, Georgians and Victorians came along and they wanted to remodel, they wanted to modernise and therefore they dismantled earlier features. In fact, there were large periods of time here at Marken Hall where the hall was rented to tenant farmers and they simply didn't have the money to do such kind of remodelling and modernisation. And so the house that we still see here today is raw and it's authentic. And if that's how you like your medieval and Tudor buildings, then Markenfield Hall is definitely for you. One of the striking things about Markenfield Hall is just how homely it is, because it is a private home. And so once you enter the porch, which used to be in earlier times a kitchen, you may be greeted by an open fireplace. Then as you progress through the house, you'll go up the Victorian staircase, not the original staircase, into the old Great Hall. It's a wonderfully cosy room, surrounded by books, bookshelves, and a library of one of the late owners. And it's just the kind of place you can imagine taking a book off the shelf, sitting on the sofa, and curling up in front of the fire. One of the most historically important rooms of Markenfield Hall is its chapel, which lies adjacent to the Great Hall. Now, let's roll back time to 1569. A group of disaffected Catholic Northern Earls decide to rise up against Elizabeth's Protestant Church and her Protestant England. Hearing Catholic Mass had been outlawed, it was a dangerous time to be a Catholic. But of course, the North had always been more Catholic than the Southern Protestant part of England disaffected, the Earls of Westmoreland and the Earls of Northumberland, alongside notable men including Thomas Markenfield V and his uncle Richard Norton, got together to plot a rising. This became known as the Rising of the North. And after those Northern Earls had come down from Durham, they came here to Markenfield, and in fact they mustered in its central courtyard. The Earls, Thomas Markenfield and Richard Norton all heard Mass in the chapel here before they headed off out under Markenfield's gatehouse with the banner of the Five Wounds of Christ held aloft, heading on their way to try and seize Mary, Queen of Scots, who by this time, of course, had fled from Scotland having been forced to abdicate her throne in favour of her youngest son, and she was being held in the Midlands. The uprising failed, the troops dispersed. Thomas Markenfield fled abroad, 
and this house was attained by the Crown. It was the end of the Markenfield line here at Markenfield Hall. The medieval road that once linked Ripley with Ripon has long since gone. And this has meant that today Markenfield Hall has set well back a mile or so off the main road, which means it is hidden from sight. And as you make your way along the winding track, you really will wonder what you're about to come across. But it is an absolute gem, as I have said, for its pure authenticity. You can visit throughout the year by appointment. Just make sure you check out the website for Markenfield Hall, which is markenfieldhall.com. You can visit here at any time of the year. And one of the beauties of this place is it is, of course, well off the tourist trail. And due to its significant Tudor history, I would say that if you're visiting the area, my friends, make sure you put it on your itinerary. Well, that's me telling you the story of Markenfield Hall and particularly its historic part in the rising of the North. I'll see you on the next Tudor road trip.